Hello, my ever so kind, gentle, understanding YouTubers. You might already know me as the one troublemaking dude under, well, 100 subs who makes so bad it's good YouTube poops and other shit posts. Well, just wait until I tell you what, I'm, and I'm going to stop making pulp and get my ass back in gear to make a true weekly updating web comic review series and one of the few that aren't affiliated with any major sellout YouTuber network. So hipsters of 4chan, Tumblr, elsewhere, like the signal fires because I'm the reviewer for you. Now getting back to the main topic, a fellow friend in Minnesota who goes by the alias Lankara reviews old, boring, paperback, DC, and Marvel mainstream schlock, did talk about in one of his comics reviews, comics or comics he'll never review episode that the reason he never gets around to reviewing webcomics is because quote unquote a labor of love and not a genuine career well are you kidding me Lankara being a webcomic artist is just about as demanding a career and hobby as and as making a normal paperback comic and deserves just as much <laughs> for so delicious bashing for starters, well, for starters, Penny Arcade is a prime example of how advantageous making comics online is to making normal paperbacks, which I may remind you are slowly becoming obsolete as more and more people use the internet. So, there, Lincoln. Well, whatever you call your show, Top of the World War, I really don't care. But you don't need to pay a publisher or a printing house. All you need is time, patience, and skill or not. And any idea you can think of can be out there for millions upon millions on interwebs to see. Of course, the internet ensues. While leveling the playing field in terms of the comics industry has enabled hordes of wannabes and amateurs to come out of the woodwork and post what I could describe as, while there are some pretty well-made gems, as per Sturgeon's Law, there are those other 90% web webcomics that range from somewhat mediocre to only a few ticks up from shitposting or trolling from how bad they are. But of course, bad has its own measure of tears. Something I'll get to by the end, since I think we pretty well established my mission at this point. So for my first ever, ever true review, let's take a look at Shattered Skies, where furry meets generic high fantasy. Unfortunately, the fantasy is the only thing that's high in this comic. <laughs> by I, the one and only, by I, the one and only webcomic walk digress. Is we start this webcomic out with I, um... Holy shit! shit, shit, shit. Seriously, what's with the furry goddesses and their aversion to clothing? Aren't deities supposed to be, I don't know, more formal? <laughs> or more well-dressed? <laughs> well, first impressions do really make or break work, and... Ugh, this is just plain pandering. Perverted teenagers with overactive sex drives. But, anyway, the goddess of furry porn, according to the narrator, is the goddess of creation in this universe, and was the sole creator of the four races, which are being introduced from order of creation. The first born Stafakshians, original title there, <laughs> very original title, uh, give you credit, were giving control over the classical elements, and live in a flowing city. Of course! Really? All of them? So... There is, according to what I later read, there is a total of five elemental clans. Uh, fire, water, air, er, <laughs> I'm sorry, wind, and snow. We'll get to that later, since this is going to be a um, possible multi-part review. But... Do they all live in the Funk City? Would it make more sense that they each had their own domains like the Fireboxes, who unfortunately don't have cookies enabled? <laughs> Everything is better with cookies, actually. To live in a healthy live in healthy, heavily volcanic areas where 
foxes and un water foxes and underwater cities. Uh, you get the point. Also, where the hell is the earth element? That is like the quintessential classical element here. Uh, yeah, first flood hole. Oh, jeez. Mother Key is one arbitrary bitch for not giving them fucking boring. Or giving them. God damn it, I made a mistake in my script. Give, for giving them fucking boring ass snow instead of fucking hard ass rock earth. Also, more necessary nudity. Jesus Christ, it's like the creator got a minor degree in how to distract the audience from an exposition dump with masters in being a lazy, uninspired Australian dork. Boobs! And who's the guy on the left? Hopefully no one important, because that would be too cliche, am I right? Oh, that's right, we all just got together and decided, <laughs> let's stroll over a quarter of the Foxians, or whatever they're called, with fucking snow powers! Ooh, and with the power to just give people frostbite or shit. Well, we give the earth to the jackals instead of for no explained reason. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes even less sense knowing the furry porn goddess hates them. Then why the fuck give them any power to begin with? <laughs> I have no idea! You are so old testament. I didn't say Christian! Hold down! And third, in the arbitrary creation queue, we have the Wolven, led by the ruthless house of LA. Which sound, in all honest opinion, more like. Unconditionally, as only your youngest child is loved. Really? Okay. Well, um, okay. Never explain really why they love so much, but anyway. Last on our list are the cats. Hated unconditionally as abominations because they aren't canines, but how? Why would you create something so that you, so you could hate it? This is really starting to sound Old Testament. Also, if this is the mythology of this world, surely the people who go to whatever temple of whateverism can learn about how apparently the gods have tried to tear everyone with cats being called abominations at the bottom, and then everyone should hate them for some unexplained reason. And... But don't worry, guys. This is religion of peace. Oh, wait. We're all at war with each other. Yeah, the gods of shattered skies are dicks. They don't even bother intervening to stop the creatures from mindlessly killing each other. Not because of not inter not interfering with people's free will, but because it gives the keeper time, gives her something interesting to write about. My life is a Call me an infidel, but I fucking hate these gods. And all the species look the same, save for only a few differentiations between the noses and possibly ears. I don't know. Looks like someone failed an anatomy class, honestly. We then cut to page two, or this next page, and it really gets proper page numbers on web comics, but anyway, it's page two, really. We cut to page two to find out the planet orbits a binary star system with a red dwarf orbiting a yellow star. It's not impossible, but I sure that planet must have erratic climate change for such an unsafe orbit. That would actually make for some interesting plot, actually. Having the planet get erratically hot to cold, hot to cold, but anyway, this is the point. What can I assume is a military officer? Stresses his concern about a peace deal with the wolves. Honestly. Honestly, given the fact that sending two children on this mission. That maybe this wasn't such a good idea. But the head honcho's like, trust me, come on, roll with it. Also, what's with the thing he has on his head? Can't be a Bluetooth since both ends are nowhere near the mouth or ears. 
So, from what I can tell, the cats are sort of analog for East Asian culture. Um, can you tell me why they're abominations again? If they're capable of building energy-driven VTOL aircraft, then they're far from anything evil or barbaric. What kind of pantheon would just promote racism for racism? So? Huh? Can anyone ask that question? Answer that question. But well, that's not the only uh, theme in this comic that's a bit risque. Also, that top. Uh, it's not that I have any problem with the the scape of fishnets. It just looks like what seems to be a metal breastplate, blah, blah, breastplate just hanging from the fishnet and only being supported by a metal ring around her neck. How is that even remotely comfortable? And even if her neck could support the weight, how does it, it chafe her boobs? Because I don't see any bra under, under that shit. Of course, we both find out they both have a dark and tragic past as war orphans. Uh, mark that on one off on my Mary Sue Bingo. Next page. And of course, the male cat by the name of... Jeez. Chiz forgot to bring a gun because he's a total dumbass. Why were you lying? Okay, again, why were you lying solely on this dumb piece of shit to protect you in the first place? Couldn't you have brought your own fucking gun? Oh, that's right, you expect to carry everything because you're a selfish, lazy bitch who doesn't want to get all tired from lifting shit with your own weight. And what Scamander just gave him just one gun to share between the two of you in the first place, which would be just... That's just stupid! Well, anyways, that wraps up my review. Well, what can I say from this comic is... I really don't know what to think of it. I... It's... It's... Well, the setting is very generic fantasy thoroughfare, but... This is only part one, so... I would just ask you guys to stay tuned for part two and all sorts of stuff out there. <laughs> because I think I just ran out of script there. Oops. Wait a hoe, wait a hoe, wait a